Hello, the Darkness 344 here, and in today's video, I'll be showing off this uh, new display that I created. So, well, as you can see, uh, one of the functionality is that we can plot, well, um, characters. So, um, what else can this display do? So, first of all, um, it's a 24 by 24 pixel display, and each pixel is uh, 2 by 2 um, redstone lamps. So, this means that uh, we can get fairly compact uh, circuitry as well to go along. Uh, with each pixel um, and it makes the wiring a bit easier than having a like just a, a one a one by one pixel but what can this display basically um, do so first of all we have pixel plotter functionality down here so we can plot individual pixels if we want um, just with this um, this button over here so we put in an x and well that's a y so we put in an x coordinate and a y coordinate uh, between 0 and 23 of course um, and then we just hit the um, plot pixel button and it will plot us a pixel wherever we put it. So that makes this um, display great for like graph plotting and stuff. So you can do like lines and stuff on it. It's, it's fairly useful for that. So the other thing this has is a, a frame buffer. So this works using D flip flops or D latches. I, I can't remember which one they are exactly. Um, but we have uh, just repeater locks over here. And what will happen is the main memory for this display is uh, these SR latches over here. I'll probably go over each component individually in a minute. But basically, um, we can um, reset and set the, the SR latches um, while we're working on the image. And once the image is fully complete, then we can update the D, D latches or D flip flops and then they'll show uh, whatever's on screen. So this means that if we have, uh, say we're drawing an image, say we want to draw a smiley face, but we don't want it to have this pixel, then this pixel, then the smile or whatever, uh, all appearing at the screen one pixel at a time, what we can do um, is just plot them all to uh, the SR latches, and then when the image is fully done, then we update the frame buffer and then they'll display. So the last thing this display has, um, it utilizes, uh, well, the pixel plotter has a bit of a pass through and this allows us to plot bitmap images. So instead of doing some sort of 24 by 24 bitmap image, what I've done is I've broken it down into six by four characters. So what we can do is plot 24 different characters on the display. So that's also why a 24 by 24 resolution is because it fits all the characters perfectly. So if we go over and look at this image, each character is going to be three pixels by five pixels tall and we have this blank spot um, whoops, around it like this which means that um, when we actually plot multiple characters down in a row we have this space in between them which makes it just you know actually look good with a, a three by five area um, we can like plot pretty much any of the ascii alphabet i guess so capital letters lowercase letters numbers uh, you can even use it to plot custom characters so say you wanted to like uh, so you wanted like a, a game sprite, you could do that, though it's kind of limited because of the gap. Um, you can also do stuff like um, like walls or whatever if you have like a maze kind of game. Though I'd, I'd recommend using a different type of display because this doesn't have any sort of like shifter built into it. So the way the actual um, letter or bitmap displaying works is, um, of course, it's divided into 24 individual uh, bits and then we just provide an X and a Y in so as you can see we have um, the bitmap Y over here and then the bitmap X over here and once we've done that we just click um, this button over here and it'll plot a bitmap um, wherever we put the coordinate in and it'll plot a letter so the way where the letters are stored are in these four rows up here and this basically uh, these all should really be connected to each other but because I didn't want the wiring to get too messy, I've left them separate for now. And this means that if you do want to um, connect them to say like a ROM for um, letter storage, it's it's much easier making four separate ROMs, which use uh, which are all identical to each other. Um, you could just wrap it around here. That's what I was gonna do. So the ROM would be this side, um, rather than making a one unified ROM and then connecting, like trying to snake all the wires down to it, which is gonna be a bit complicated. So yeah, we can just put in a letter um, in here and we have to also do it backwards. So for for instance, a D would um, look like this. 
uh, but that's because I just wired it wrong, uh, the wrong way around. And anyway, the, the ROM would take care of that anyway. So to the end user, you wouldn't even like bother changing that. So this is kind of what the letters look like. Um, you can change up the font or whatever. I've just done it like this. So like and subscribe. Of course, you can use whatever bitmap image you really want. So that's kind of the rundown of what this display can do. But let's actually see it in action. So first of all, what we're going to do is just uh, reset the display. So we can just press this button over here. And as you can see, uh, the display doesn't actually clear. And that's because um, we haven't updated the frame buffer yet. All that previous image is still stored to the frame buffer. And when we update the frame buffer, now it'll update to a blank screen because we've cleared the SR latches. If we do that real quick, uh, just like this, um, as you can see, we got a blank screen now. All the pixels are synchronized. So this pixel up here will turn on and off the exact same time as the pixel down here. Now what we can do, say let's just try plot an image. So um, if we plot a pixel at one, one, for instance, we'll just plot it there. And then say we plot another pixel at say three, one, as you can see, they don't display on the screen until we update the frame buffer like this. And there we go, we got our both our pixels. The other thing this can do, of course, is the bitmaps. So let's try that out. I guess let's do it at zero one um, because there's already stuff down here. So if we go over here, we'll put zero in the X. Uh, this lamp's on. It isn't actually giving power, as you can see. So we'll put zero in the X and we'll put one in the Y. And then we also have to put an image um, in the Y. I've already put a letter in. I put the letter A in here. And now we can just press this button down here. So X enable, and that will just plot the bitmap. And now, of course, nothing's on the screen until we update the frame buffer. And there we go, we should get an A. So there we go. With the frame buffer, this also means you can write full words onto the screen, then press the plot button and they'll all appear at the same time. So it's a quite a useful um, thing to have in your display. So yeah, that's pretty much everything on what this display can do. Let's actually now get into um, how it works. So first of all, uh, we'll just go layer by layer, I guess. And the first layer is this bit over here, which is just the screen, lamp screen. Then we have this over here, which is what actually um, drives the lamps. So as you can see, um, we just enable this one block and it will enable four blocks on the lamp. So that's how we do that. Then we have the the frame buffer over here and we're just using simple repeater lock, um, the flip flops like this, or D latches over here. And that's very simple. Every single one of them is connected up to the same control wire down there and it's all synchronized. And these repeaters are just here to allow us to um, expand it and stuff. Then over here, we have um, the SR latches. So um, I actually showed this design off because I, I think I said I tried to show it off in uh, my pixel plotter video, but I built the wrong SR latch. So the way this design works is we have resident watch like this, and this goes down into a block like this. And as you can see, we get a loop, but if we place a block on top of that, um, then a block up like this, Press on torch like that, and a block on top of that. And now we get an SR latch that is stackable. As you can see, we can set and reset it. And it's stackable like this, both horizontally and vertically. So it's, it's a fairly decent design. There are other designs to do it horizontally and vertically. So for instance, there's um, this design, which is probably the most widely used, but I really dislike this design because it has a few issues. So this design over here, is a bit nicer because you can visually see it a bit easier so when it's stacked it's a lot easier to see uh, you don't have like this weird block thing like this and you can just see the data a bit better and it's all on the same layer so it makes stacking a tiny bit easier but the problem about this design is it's quite slow uh, because we have these repeats over here so if you provide it with say just a one tick pulse you get a cycle like this you have to give it a good um, several tick pulse like that for it to even do anything uh, or you turn it into a clock. So one of the ways to speed up this design, of course, is just using a piece of rust and dust, but then you have a different time to set it, then you have to reset it. So it's a bit um, finicky. I don't really like this design where my one over here, um, you don't have any repeaters at all. So the only time um, is on the redstone torches to turn on or off. So that's the SR latches. Um, then over here, we have the XY plotting part. So this is a um, design by Javi um, from Wild Engineering. You can check them out on YouTube. Um, and I've kind of modified it a bit. I've only put one item in the barrel uh, to make the um, powering it a bit easier. Um, and then I've kind of modified this section over here as well a tiny bit. But this allows us to put an 
x coordinate over here for the column so we can just turn one of these off for the specific column and then we also have a y coordinate over here and that will uh, representing the rows over here and then this bit of circuit over here just allows us to pass a value through so we can pass the bitmap images through and the way it does this is it turns it into a signal strength of one so it only affects this uh, one redstone dust here and as long as we don't have a repeater over here it's only going to affect this one cell and allow us to pass through a value uh, with this redstone dust over here if we didn't put a signal strength of only one down here it would affect other cells because it would power them like this but because it's only passing through one um, it only affects that cell i'll show i'll show that later on the example over there so now this bit over here just controls um, which bitmap image um, is displaying so we pass the bitmap image to all of these at the same time and then we only want one um, to be plotted so we'll only enable one of these uh, modules over here and there are 24 modules in total and the way we enable it is just by passing an x y into it and it'll have like a, a simple decoder matrix decoder i guess and it'll choose the very specific one and then over here is just the bus to to actually pass the image in um, i'll show this off in a minute because it's fairly compact for what it is so this is uh, me just planning what the display would be like and over here is the actual circuitry behind each of those letter plotters i guess so over here um, it's just pretty much what it is and we are using subtraction comparators to pass through a signal so normally if we just pass through a signal like this whatever number we have here so if, say a signal strength of 15 minus 0 is still 15 we get a pass through but when we enable uh, this repeater it provides a signal strength of 15 over here so this comparator now does 15 minus 15 which is 0 so passes a signal strength of 0 through so that's how we enable and disable um, the inputs and of course the inputs would all be going into these comparators and then we can use some glass like this to go to all the comparators like that and we can hook them up to an XY decoder like this. So these are normally high. So if they're both normally high, then we won't be getting an output as you can see. If only one of them is high, we still won't be getting an output. They only turn, we only get an output if both of them are low. And this circuit of course, because we have the bit of gap between them for the blank pixels, is very easy to tile um, just like this. Now um, let's actually show you the pass through method that I've used. So um to get all the data to each of these displays um instead of having an individual um, rom for every single one of these uh, pixels that would mean we'd have to have 24 because we have 24 letter displays um we only want we want to have as minimal amount of rom as possible so of course we have these four separate ones so we'd still have to have four of them but four is a lot better than having 24 um and if possible you can always merge them all together to only have to have one so over here what we've done is we somehow need to uh, run a horizontal bus like this or say a vertical bus even and it needs to connect to every single one of these so i chose horizontal because there's only four horizontally and it's a bit easier to run horizontally than vertically and we just have to run this pixel has to connect to this pixel as well as this pixel then this pixel over here has to connect to only this pixel and only this pixel. Then this one down here has to connect to that one, this one and this one. And it's a bit confusing to do the busing, but normally what we do is use repeaters like this. This line over here, when we enable, only goes to this one. This line over here only goes to that one. And this line over here only goes to that one. But as you can see, there's a slight problem because we have to use repeaters like this to pass through the signal through the wire. So this means that the more modules we have, the slower the actual control wires um, are going to get because we have like so many repeaters like this, meaning we have a slight issue. We want as minimum, well, we want as few repeaters on the actual control wires as possible. So the solution I came up with was this. And what we do is we use um, comparators uh, to only give a signal strength of one. So when we enable this line like this, what this comparator will do is it will have one over here and then it'll do one minus zero, which will equal one. And then we get this only one individual redstone passing through. And because it's only a signal strength of one, it doesn't go to other cells, as you can see. If it was greater, it would also go to other ones. And this also means we can't have a repeater like this. We have the, re the repeater has to be one block over, of course. However, because it's also powering this block down here, we can get an output like this. Um, this also goes for the one over here. We do a similar thing like that and we only power that individual one or whatever 
though I've done this one slightly different because since we're going through two lines we we can invert it then invert it again so we don't actually need to invert this line over here uh, like I've done with this one so it's a fairly simple way of passing signal strength through lines and that's exactly how the XY decoder uh, does it as well where it means the signal strength is only um, a one but yeah that's pretty much this display um, there'll be a world download in the description below if if you want to check it out um, yeah that's pretty much it please like and subscribe and I'm out